Welcome to purchasing series for Learn BC. We're going to take you through everything to do with procurement, all the different purchase documents, and some really cool advanced settings. They're all quick videos. Please click subscribe, like, and share, and um, give us feedback if you've got any questions or any special requests. Let's get into this. I'm in Business Central and I'm in a business manager role, and I want to go to vendors. I could do that off my bookmarks bar or I could go to purchasing vendors. Alternatively, I can go to search and type in vendors. And from here, from go to pages and task, click vendors. So now here's our list of vendors. We can see here different vendors that have been set up during this tutorial series. I'm gonna go create a new vendor. And the first thing that pops up is what's called a vendor template. I've created three for this example today. One's a example company, example person, individual uh, business to consumer, and example employee. And so each of them have different things that help speed up the setup of a card. I'm not going to cover these today, but in principle, if you want to speed your team up in setting up new vendors on the fly, use your templates. The same applies to customer templates and item templates. It's a must. Let's hit OK. And what we have here is a new card, and I'm going to go set up right size, 365. And straight away, we have ourselves a blocked record. Now, you notice it's blocked by default because I use the template in this version of Business Central. If I want to change it from blocked, it's going to have to go through request approval, and we'll show you that at the end. Now, we've set the name. So the first thing we need to do is setting up a vendor is make sure the name is correct this is limited to 100 characters we're going to go to address and as i select the town it knows uh the postcode that we're using if this was blank and i actually went 4165 it would actually pop up with an option for me to choose well which city that shares that postcode so it does actually have a table of all australian postcodes when we do New Zealand we have one for New Zealand when we do other countries we take that in as well phone number um, we're gonna do some example things here just a website an email address an account number if the vendor has an account number for you I'll type that in it's useful information and last thing underneath the tab address we will really want to know the default contact it might be the finance department or it might be a person and as I add that person the contact record is created you can see up here under home you can press contact and now I can see the user that I've created and it's replicated the contact details off the company that we had there so the default email address phone number mobile is all copied off the vendor's default card so it's kind of useful it's a quick way to add the contact let's keep going if you're using xflow we would use this moment to set the destined gl code under predefined account or use the purchase codes for invoicing there are two things that are important that are critically important for you one is posting groups so by default our customers generally have domestic foreign and intercompany icp but the reality is some would have different customer groups called government commercial manufacturing depending on how their balance sheets are set up and how they're expecting outcomes uh, in reporting and so the three stand for your posting group for business which means uh, the, it, it applies to customers and vendors, and it's telling us where our income, our cost of goods, and our purchase accounts are, where our interim is. The GST says how GST is handled based on this relationship, and they're paired together. Your vendor group says when we owe this vendor money, where does it show on the balance sheet? So number one, posting group. All right, that's super important for all three. The second thing is the currency. If the foreign, you set a code. If they're domestic, you keep it blank. Now for domestic here, we can go grab an ABN. So I'm gonna to go to ABR, the business.gov.au. And I'm gonna look up an ABN here and grab it. And we're gonna put it in. 
and mark registered. Now, an easy way to do this, we've got a ready extension. When you install it, it installs a tab here that says ABR online, and then it will pull about 20 fields out from the government and post that. And that's available at our ready.business website. All right, payments. The key things here that I'll be interested in is the payment term. I additionally ask for the cash flow payment, 30 days. I also ask for the bank payment method, and I, that would be EFT for me, for this vendor. We don't have bank account details yet because they haven't invoiced us, but if they have, you'd be setting up the EFT, which means you'd be turning on the EFT is, EFT is your default, and you would just here, you'd set the bank account. As we get down into receiving, we want to make sure the location is set as a minimum and as a must. And there you have it. We have our vendor set up. Now, once it's set up, you may want to send it for approval. We're not going to cover workflow approvals today, but if you've got them configured, the concept here is anybody can add a card, but as soon as they go to release it, it's going to fail with an alert saying activation must be sent for approval. So... At this stage, this is where we move on, and I'm gonna stop and we're gonna move on to our next video.